one scientist foresaw the day the world ended. There are two forms of life fighting for survival out here in this valley. And only one of them can win. I'll talk to the girls in the morning. The girls? Yes. They should bear children as soon as possible. He did not consider a human emotion. No one takes my gun. Tony, look out! He did not know about the uninhibited exhibitionism of a striptease dancer. He'd forgotten about the power of love and knew nothing about the vicious force of jealousy. Nothing ever come easy to me. Don't touch me. I can't stand you. Tony, let the little girl go. But more thrilling, more exciting, more mystifying is the monster. The mutation by atomic energy, part man, part beast, salaciously watching women as they bathe. A monster such as the eyes of man has never before seen. Killing one by one each of the few living men. Hunting out the most beautiful of the remaining women to take as his mate. Oh, 
by Chester Morris, Marla English, Kathy Downs, Lance Fuller, Tom Conway, Frida Innescourt, and Ron Randall. It's an adventure into the occult, such as few people have known, and only those who see it can believe. You're not going for that supernatural hokum of his. I don't really know what I'm going for. I know he's a killer. Now you are traveling back through time and space. Farther, farther back. Back, 
Under his spell, she was both herself and another being, the she-creature seeking life sustenance from the stolen heartbeats of others. <laughs> a woman born to be loved, and two men wanted her. One, a man whose powerful mad mind controlled her every reflex, except her love. No! The other, willing to fight any odds for her love. You've been living in shadows. I want to bring you back to life. Society dances to hide the hysterical terror caused by their sudden intimacy with death. Forever closer comes the she-creature. You'll never forget. Good evening, goblins and ghouls, and welcome to the Friday Night Scream stream. I'm your host, Spakenstein, joined by my very good friends, Mr. Evan Sink. Good evening. And Mr. Fresh Rogan, who recently got a pet duck. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that duck's really going wild over there, Fresh. Yeah, it's going buck wild, and it says right here, hog wild. It's going duck wild. Yeah, I was going to say Are duck wild. This is, thing? Uh... is it hungry? <laughs> yeah, is that why it's quacking so much? It's, it sounds like you're not feeding it enough. No, I think it'll be fine if I just ignore it. It's, it'll quack itself out, right? <laughs> yeah, it'll tire itself out. That's right. Never do it again. Yeah, no, it's it's just excited for the movie. Right, right. So welcome everybody to uh, another exciting Friday night of some good old fashioned public domain horror. Um, you know, every Friday we hang out, and we watch you know, some pretty, pretty cheesy um, B horror movies. Uh, sometimes C D E F. It goes. <laughs> Etc. 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 Um, and you know, if you've been following along this season of the show, you'll know that it's our season, uh, our see, see, summer of schlock. And um, you know, it's interesting. I think we've maybe seen, um, you know, this season we, you know, schlock of course means things that are poor quality or cheap, and. We, I'd say we've seen a fair amount of that this season. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a vibe. We've we've struck a certain vibe with the uh, the film selection this season. I yeah, I, I think so. And and I, it's interesting that you mentioned that it, it is a vibe because you know it really is. You know we you know we've been doing this show for six seasons now, and from the very beginning we've talked about kind of not wanting to say necessarily that movies are good or bad, especially not just say, Oh, that was bad. Um, but I think that I have to amend kind of the, I think that's too <laughs> like, um, abstract of a way to look at it because, um, you know, there just are some films that I, everyone, even the filmmakers themselves will recognize are bad movies. I right? think we're we're pretty generous for filmmakers who are actually trying their best, but if you're cutting corners then you know, maybe we'll be a little less favorable. And we found that with last week's film, uh, Teenage Zombies, directed by Jerry Warren, which I know we all felt like like the amateurness was just so close to home in certain ways <laughs> you know uh there's there was just something about it that was very like 
I don't know. It was it was it was very very amateurish, and the director acknowledged that he, he made bad films and that he was just trying to get them done quick and cheap and and i think that's a thing that we found on the show they're just there are movies that are you, you can use the word bad and in researching tonight's film and tonight's filmmaker i kind of kept coming across this word that i've i've seen before and it's the word bad film mm-hmm. which and it's you know as one word no space bad film and uh, the 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 basic definition of it is the very common phrase "so bad it's good," right? And I think so. We, that has a name now. Has has that always been called bad film? So, I believe that the term really started to get popularized in the eighties. Because in the eighties, you had all these like film magazines that touched on, like you know, critical film theory magazines that touched on more of the fringes of cinema and you know there's a whole kind of terminology for that called paracinema a lot of the movies that we watch fall under the title of paracinema because anything that is you know it could be horror but it could also be um a cheesy action movie or just something that's like outside the fringes of the mainstream and just kind of you know kind of not definable by your typical just genre alone there's other things to it that kind of make it give it merit right and bad films the same thing it's like you know it's that idea of so bad that it's it's good um and and so that's kind of like even the director of tonight's film I used that word to describe his own work in his autobiography um because uh Tonight's film is directed by a guy named Larry Buchanan, who literally called himself a schlockmeister. He used that in like the subtitle of his autobiography. Do you think he considered himself a um, a bad filmmaker? Yeah, I think he did. Um, <laughs> I think he definitely didn't have a problem with it. Um, you know, again, uh, you know, the kind of I came across the more kind of film theory like definition of bad film which is basically it's characterized by inept like this is from this is from a scholar or professor named becky bartlett from a book that was just written two years ago all on it's a bad film book so like that's how this is very much like starting to become a like discourse in film studies right and like but she said it's characterized by ineptitude exacerbated by material poverty and restrictive production conditions um, with badness relating primarily to incompetence. Right. And so, of course, <laughs> she's citing Ed Wood and um, Manos, The Hands of Fate, a lot of things that in the past couple seasons we started to we started to get into. And that's why I've got to amend like. It's okay to call tonight's film bad and to, to to start embracing the word bad as opposed to, well, we shouldn't call a film bad because sometimes it's okay. And we'll see in the case of tonight's film, which is entitled Creature of Destruction. It's from 1967, directed by this guy, Larry Buchanan. And it's basically your classic uh, sea monster uh, gill man story which we've had a f- w- at least one of this season right well not really no spoilers yeah, well, <laughs> but uh kind of but you'll have to go watch you'll have to go watch our past episodes to figure out what we're talking which one we're talking about but uh but no um so you know tonight's act- film actually deals with uh a gill monster as they're sometimes called you know like creature of the black lagoon was called the gill man so any kind of creature from the ocean that is like man like basically like a man but then has like a fish face and and, you know they they didn't want to call it a merman no they didn't want to call it a merman because it's like definitely the (laughs) it's like that family guy bit where it's the reverse it's it's where it's got the fish upper half and the man lower half right that's basically (laughs) that's basically what you get with tonight's gill monster um and it's a pretty wild story um you know this film is actually a remake of 
the she creature, which we just saw the trailer for. Great title, in. by the way. Yeah, great title. Um, creature of destruction isn't isn't quite. It's a little more vague. The she creature, but this is a remake of the she creature. It's a color made for TV remake. So um, so it's yeah. This movie's just got some interesting stuff. So um, when I read she creature, uh, I didn't. I, I didn't get what they were going for, mm-hmm. but it's not until I heard. Uh, I mean, that's it's good. I like that a lot. Yeah. Nice punny title. Yeah, they were having fun with it, you know. Um, I mean, and, and that's the thing is, is that was a cheesy late fifties sci fi movie, and you know, Larry Buchanan made a lot of these uh, remakes of these cheesy B uh, sci fi movies. But we'll talk about we'll talk about all that later. Um, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. Uh, you know what else is gonna be a lot of fun is mm. our cocktail for this evening, which Evan brings us in a little segment, which this season we're calling Schlocktail Hour. So this week, as I was looking up uh, recipes for some kind of creature cocktail. I came across a recipe for uh, a drink called the Bleacher Creature. So that is that's a, it's a really simple drink. It's um, a shot, uh, what one and a half ounces of overproof rum, and a shot of butterscotch schnapps mm. just poured right over. No mixing involved. And um, have you guys ever heard of the bleacher creatures? Because I mm-hmm. hadn't before. Apparently um, there's a there's a group of New York Yankees fanatics that uh, that's like the name for their like super fan group. The bleacher or, or the creatures. The bleacher creatures. Okay. So they've, they've got you know they've got you know their own branding they've got like their own section in the stadium Whoa. i think which Dang. when i read that like kind of made me think the stadium people probably just had to sequester these folks right mm-hmm. round them up you gotta yeah, they... you gotta keep them contained or else they're gonna they're gonna turn the whole stadium into creatures <laughs> you're not gonna be able to control anybody to keep these creatures in check they're all going to start running on the field and chasing the players around and maybe eating them. It could be, it could be a bloodbath. Pouring butterscotch schnapps right on the, mm-hmm. on the baseballs. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I, I, I you know, haven't tried that one, but I, I, was, I saw their recipe and I thought, that's really interesting, but how can I put my own twist on it? And so I was reading a little bit about the, you know, the the film, and I saw that that term you said, "gill man," which I had also never heard. Yeah, I I always just thought like, you know, the creature from the Black Lagoon. That's just his name. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. It's not not the gill man. Yeah, it took me a while to catch on to that too, but it's shorthand. This gill man, they're talking about. Yeah, who? What is? What is? What is a gill man? What hey, is he gill? Like? What's up, man? <laughs> yep, that's it's a man named Gill. Should should have known. <laughs> but uh, so I, I saw that, and I saw this drink, and I, I thought, well, uh, here's an idea. We've got three ounces of liquid, and if we add one more, then we get to a nice even gill, four mm. ounces. So that's how we end up with uh, the gill creature, which is tonight's drink. So that is one and a half ounces of overproofed rum mixed with one ounce of pineapple juice. We're going to mix that up nice and good. And then we're going to pour a shot of butterscotch schnapps just right over. And I was... uh, yeah, Garrett and I were talking about this before the show. I think it, the instructions didn't really say, but I think this might be kind of a more of a gulper than a sipper. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, I do. Not <laughs> not a big fan of having to gulp my. I mean, I do kind of gulp my drinks down anyway, but a quaffer at least. More shots are not necessarily my thing. Uh, not my favorite way of consuming alcohol but yeah. um so i wanted to to wait to pour this over until we're we're right here and ready to go nice 
fresh. Keep nice it and fresh. fresh. Keep uh-huh. it fresh. Uh-huh. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> uh, without uh, any more ado. Shit. Yeah, yeah there's exactly actually, it's actually a surprising amount of, maybe it's just the ice, but... Ooh, dude, I it love. It looks like a full glass. I like the smell of that uh, sh- that uh, schnapps. Dude. It actually smells really that good. That schnapps comes right off the top of that man. I didn't even know. I wouldn't have expected our liquor store to have a uh, butterscotch schnapps. That's surprising. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. it smells good. It does. Uh, let's see how it tastes. Right. This is the Gill Creature. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. That's really good. I That's, sipped it. And okay. was it, did you drink like half of it already? I, I, or something? I quaffed it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna chill on it. It's pretty good. It's, it is pretty good. I, like it's the alcohol is now kind of settling into the back of my mouth. I'm like, whoa, okay, it's a little stronger than I thought. Yeah, but. That- that rum, that, I can chill on this. Yeah, the, the overproofed rum. That's uh, yeah, it's like slowly it's, like it's spreading it permeates. Out. It really just permeates through you. It does. It is. It is slowly like sp- like waking up in my system. So that's interesting. That's it's really pretty good. You know, I I was hoping it'd be kind of like pineapple upside down cake. It's it's in the neighborhood. It's in, yeah, I think it's pretty close. You definitely when you first sip it you get the the schnapps up top mm-hmm. and then and then that rum just kind of <laughs> creeps in slowly uh-huh yeah hopefully like the creature in tonight's film um so yeah this is a pretty good uh yeah gill creature i think yeah, this is an <laughs> accurate uh accurate name for this cocktail evan you outdid yourself this evening mm had to take one more sip yeah the pineapple i'm tasting the pineapple now too like yeah it's in there yeah i think pineapple upside down cake is a pretty good way to describe what's going on here yeah that's it's surprisingly good you know it's a that's a pretty simple cocktail if you want to make it at home yeah yeah i was like that was the thing we've we've had a kind of a mix this summer of yeah. Some simple and some more ornate cocktails. Sometimes I'm really working over here. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you you just got all, you're mixing up a whole store. You got a whole bar cart over here, basically. So I'm on some Easy nights. Street tonight. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's so funny that it's just those three ingredients and it actually has like a lot going on that complements each other, I think. Like you were worried that maybe the pineapple. And yeah. The, I wasn't but, sure if the pineapple and the butterscotch would mix. No, but. I think it all complements each other. It's a delicious drink, actually. Pretty good. Pretty I really good. like this. So you're doing a good job, Evan. Thank you. And it's so fun. I didn't. So a gill is four ounces. Yeah, yeah. That's like a like an old measurement. I think they used it for measuring alcohol. So I don't <laughs> well, know why, but four ounces is four ounces is just a good amount of alcohol, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't sound like it, but when it fills this whole glass, it's like, oh, okay, this is a, this is a decent drink. Like, I'm definitely not <laughs> throwing this back, Evan. <laughs> You're not tricking me into that one. Uh, okay. uh, no, no, it, it is delicious. So, I think it'll be perfect to pair with the evening's film. Um, so yeah, I, I again, creature destruction. I'm excited for this. I haven't seen it. This is um, technically, I just watched my first Larry Buchanan film, most of one last night. Uh, and it was pretty bad and uh you know, it was it was i so i i i got his uh biography and read a little bit of his autobiography read a little bit of it and uh, the film that i watched last night was the one that he was like it wasn't fun anymore i was over oh. it like and it's like really bad um oh, no. i think tonight's film he was having fun with it um i mean basically Larry Buchanan was an independent filmmaker out of Houston, Texas, who, you know, he made a a couple of exploitation films and then American International Pictures, which was the studio that Roger Corman made his Edgar Allan Poe movies for. And Roger Corman kind of had a partnership with AIP for most, for most of his like early career. Um, 
AIP came to Larry Buchanan and said, hey, we want you to do color remakes of some of our old cheesy sci-fi films for uh, television. And uh, Larry Buchanan's like, okay, sure. So they he filmed eight of these in. So this is a made for TV movie. These are yeah. The, tonight's film is a made for TV movie. He made eight of these made for TV movies, and I think like seven, six or seven of them were horror movies, and then one of them was like a war movie, and um, most of them were remakes. And so again, tonight's film is a remake of the She Creature, which I also haven't seen. I just saw the trailer uh, for the first time right there. It's fun. Um, so I'll probably have to check. Don't you love it when trailers just cut off? Yeah, I'll, I love that. It's my favorite thing in the world when they just, yeah, they just kind of end. They just kind of stop. Yeah, that's the the weird thing about trying to go find all these old movie trailers is I never know what quality copy or what condition. Like you know, sometimes I've got it where it's literally like got you know four pixels and it's you can barely that like this i mean it's kind of a wonder that these old trailers still exist yeah really. yeah like i i could i could see the movie but like all of the stuff around like the promotional material i would not expect to survive that's why they didn't copyright movie trailers and start doing that until the 60s because it was literally like all right well this is just a promotional item it doesn't have any value beyond promoting the movie initially and then who's gonna ever want to watch it again yeah. so <laughs> but, i mean nowadays new trailers are such you know just things in and of themselves i mean two minutes of the movie can pretty much give you the <laughs> whole goddamn movie <laughs> it can tell you everything you need to know uh We're packing all the good bits yeah and i think uh that that trailer for she creatures Obviously, there's a lot going on there, so um, I think I think we're gonna get a lot in tonight's movie. Um, yeah, well, I, I don't know how the how tonight's monster stacks up to the she creature and uh, our other. Did our other one have a the beach girl monster? Yeah, the beach girl monster was essentially a gill monster. And <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no, uh, it, it obviously that was a very very cheesy design on that one. You know, it was a pretty bad design on that costume. But I think I I, uh, I think there was some mention of ping pong ball mm -hmm. eyes. I think this one might take the cake, honestly. Okay. I think this one might be... At least that one had a, a children's TV show puppeteer that, like, you know, <laughs> Jim Henson knockoff who was at least trying to make something mildly interesting. Yeah, and, and it, a professional. And it still works into the plot that it's not the best-looking yeah. <laughs> costume. And so... Uh, no, this one might take this one again. If you if you pay attention to our opening credits and you see the bit of the monster from Creature from the Haunted Sea, I think this this is even worse. This is worse than that. Oh yeah. no! This okay. is yeah. This is the again. It might take the cake. So um, exciting, very exciting. Um, yeah, and I, I mean again, this is this is. Made for TV shot in Texas. Um, you know, definitely a regional film from a regional filmmaker, uh, which is always kind of an interesting, it makes for an interesting bit of um, ineptitude mm -hmm. to, to quote the bad film uh, scholar. But um, yeah, I think uh, anything before we get into tonight's movie, boys? How about that heat? It's hot lately. It's been hot. Hot out there. That's uh, got a hot movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's a hot movie, bro. Yeah. Cool down with this movie. Apparently, it's got a little bit of beach party action. Okay. So, so yeah, it's gonna be getting hot up in here. So, um, I hope you brought your sunscreen and plenty of water, and you, you got to stay hydrated. I'm. There's ice in this, so I'll definitely be staying hydrated. 
Yeah, forget the hottest day on record. We're turning the thermostat all the way up. Up, up, up. All right. Well, on that note, Fresh, if you have it queued up. I do. Without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into the exciting beginning of Creature of Destruction right now. American International, AIT, mm. this time. Usually they're AIP. Very We're getting dramatic pause. Philosophical out, out top, right out, yeah, right out that, the gate. That's a first. We haven't had a movie open with a philosophical quote. <laughs> you gotta love it. <laughs> and then a beach Set clothes sign straight out of Jaws. <laughs> And then, and then a magician. And this is how David Copperfield spends his days now. He just stands on the seashore and a top hat. <laughs> He's a beachcomber. <laughs> is is that it? Are we already? We're oh, not even a minute into the movie. Oh yeah, bro. We're starting with a pre-credit sequence, coming in bro. Hot. We're coming in way. Larry Buchanan isn't fucking around. He's got eighty minutes to fill. Damn it! <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> there and it's and dude, you're gonna get plenty of it in these first five minutes. Don't worry. <laughs> and while we have this inexplicable shot of a bird flying, but... hey, we got some some nice B-roll. Just toss it in there. <laughs> I mean, I got. I'll say it does have my attention, but who knows where this is going? No. Oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, in full close-up. <laughs> yeah, we. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna head out, guys. <laughs> Is this a silent film? <laughs> no, 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 no. Despite uh, this, this is another one of Larry Buchanan's trademarks. Just minutes upon minutes of no talking and no sound effects. Yeah, just bombastic stock music because this is just a stock musical score. One of Ronald Stein's scores. Ronald Stein was the guy who did the music for Spider Baby and a bunch of these um, B sci fi films from the 50s and 60s. Is it like a wetsuit? It's basically a wetsuit, yes. <laughs> like a Halloween mask. Yep. Whoa. Yeah. What? 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 My bad. I triggered the wrong sound. That's. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you're getting your sea legs. Yes. <laughs> Definitely dragging this out. <laughs> ah! <laughs> That was a very dramatic turn. That was great. I love that. Um, so you know how in like monster movies, there's kind of like a like a principle or like an idea where yeah. less is more, and you want to not you want to save the monster. Show the entire monster in the first five seconds. Yeah. <laughs> the opposite of Jaws. Just said, Fuck it. Wait, what? <laughs> I think the, the Dude, lack the, of like the, sound effects is what's really good. The me. nose sound. <laughs> it makes it so hard to know what the heck's going on. This is a Larry Buchanan trademark. Yeah. He's beating him up. It's all score with like no audio. <laughs> the 
felt like I'm watching a music video. <laughs> yeah, really frenetic <laughs> close-ups and yeah, yeah, wide-angle lenses, definitely. <laughs> oh my god. Man, if your monster is that shoddy, why do you get the camera so right close to it? Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, I, you know, I, lo I love just going, we're not hiding it, we're just going for it. Wearing it on their sleeve. Hey everyone, look how bad our monster is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm ugly and I'm proud. I mean, again, this is an independent filmmaker who just automatically had there was there was distribution for this. Like, there's a studio saying, "Hey, we want to put this in a TV package, so just make this really fast and really cheap." I can do it. <laughs> I love this. You so didn't we're say just it had to be good. we're all in on the monster for these just opening the whole, credits, dude. The whole time. <laughs> there's See, nothing left for the rest of the movie i love that though i love i mean hey let's let's hang out with the monster man like at least this is a real monster okay has there ever been a monster it movie that, very real that, <laughs> has there ever been a monster movie where it just follows the monster the whole time hmm it's a good question. I don't think so. Oh, see, that's a good shot. I like that. Good. Moving the branches out of the way. Yeah. Let's see what they're going for. Oh. I have some stuff in the foreground. What year did you say tonight's film was? 67. Loretta. <laughs> These shots, dude. I feel like I'm watching like a psychological thriller where someone <laughs> keeps having lapses in memory. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like some of these like where establishing oh, things God. are it's so fast it's cut really what fast what is the ultimate science can offer truth one of these truths is this we're here now now we're here each of us, now we're over not here not only the capacity to love and hate but to take that final step to be not only a creator but a destroyer a mad unreasoning killer whoa that final breakdown of our manners mores customs take us away from the millions of years leading to civilization back to the animalistic what club is this lies within the worst stand up set <laughs> now is my custom i come to yeah he's no jerry seinfeld dr basso hey, it's more like bill hicks <laughs> you said you wanted to go out tonight <laughs> I guess oh. it's supposed to be like here's all the rich people who run the world meeting and for tonight's entertainment we have a hypnotist who's gonna of the atavistic <laughs> gonna the turn this lady into a killer <laughs> I call on Dorino uh, the old sleeper agent bit <laughs> This very night, in our very time, Whoa. a nice bull cut. Of this lake, <laughs> the prognostication is murder. The prognostication. Whoa. Big words for a magician. Not, <laughs> not the prognosis, the prognostication. Prognostication. I'd rather be a fly, lie on my 
Man, the earlier Beastie Boys stuff kind of sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Stripes is grooving. Look at that guy. Yeah, man. They they had they had some good some good tees back then, man. <laughs> you gotta love generic '60s rock yeah. from like some <laughs> high school, you know, band, uh, some like local regional talent, some. Ken doll looking blonde guy. Some song that sounds like a knockoff of every popular song from that era, but is just not really impressionable in any way, shape, or form. It's rock and roll. Yeah, essentially. Essentially. This music's going to destroy our country. Look at these kids dancing to their rock and roll. We've got outlaw dancing in this beach community. <laughs> How much time do you think we can kill with the dancing? <laughs> this it really is lingering. <laughs> hey, where's your big sister? Hey, oh my god. Yeah, that was why. She needs to never talk ever. Raymond! Yeah, that was, that was definitely on purpose. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Frankly, it's pretty heady stuff for a psychologist. Some of those tycoons in there, and your father included, scare the heck out of me. <laughs> you want to get away from them for a while? Oh, now there's a brilliant idea. See what happens when you hang around me? I do. Let's go. <laughs> oh, what the upset you know again this is when adam west was killing it do you think they got the rights to put batman song in their movie i mean can i do that this is i think this is an original okay so you can make an original song about batman yeah. put it in your movie I mean, it's it's definitely a novelty song, but hey, you know, it'll kill it'll kill a couple minutes. This is what the kids want. The kids love Batman, right? Is this what parties were back then? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, all these kids are actually on acid. That's what they're not telling you. Turn up. And if they're not, they wish they were. They do. Yeah, they definitely wish. <laughs> nice. Point the camera. Point the camera. Sick. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> That's so weird. That's such a strange detail. So that grabby little man. For the Batman song. Man yeah, so weird. Maybe it's thematic. Mm. Where's Lynn and Ted? They went for a walk down by the lake. I wish they hadn't. Oh? Why? You heard what Dr. Basso said. Something terrible is going to happen along the beach tonight. <laughs> big deal, big deal. After that demonstration, how can you be so skeptical? Demonstration? It wasn't a demonstration. That was an act. Purely for the entertainment of our members, nothing more. He takes a girl and puts her in a hypnotic trance and takes her back to her former life. And you're not impressed. <laughs> Money impresses me, baby. Money. <laughs> Money, <too> baby. <laughs> oh, uh, of course, of course. Do you know where Dr. Basso is? Nope. Not unless he uh, disappeared in a puff <laughs> <up> of smoke. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I want to be what that one dimensional character. Yeah, rich, fat man chomping on a cigar, laughing heartily. 
money. <laughs> Mother is just crazy about that Dr. Basso. Basso? Mm. John Basso? Do you know him? I know of him. Really put on a wild show tonight. A show? You took a girl tonight. <laughs> I wish you had been there to see it. So do I. It's possible. Really? Really. Oh shit. Did she say, did she say tonight? Yeah, it's, it's beautiful be moonlit night right so now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're going for a walk in the moonlight. Well, they just did day for night and then didn't do any editing. They just did, yeah. That's another Larry Buchanan signature. <laughs> What, day, being lazy? Day for night that is pretty clearly day. Well, it's like it's day for night that's just day. Yeah. So he didn't even try to hide it. Well, what he did was he didn't... Usually you have filters for day for night. Like, you have filters put on the camera. He couldn't afford the filters, so he just... Uh, took off like the correction filter that everybody like that is kind of standard and just like took the camera down a few stops and just made it darker. You know, nighttime. Nighttime. Oh, Maybe. wow. They're oh, shit. In, they're in the oh, Arctic Circle. I mean, it looks like uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's just, uh, <laughs> sunny at night. Man, this guy's, uh, oh, shit. I was going to say he's acting really natural for just seeing a dead body, but then his brow shot back like I haven't <laughs> seen. Like, there's, he's definitely wearing a wig or something. He's got nerves of steel. He's a military man. He's seen dead bodies all the time. He said, damn, I uh, thought I wasn't but, at work. But I got to make sure my fingerprints aren't on uh, the door. What the fuck was that about? Yeah, is that... <laughs> that was oddly suspicious. I do like some of these shots with like leaves in front of them. This is the honeymoon cottage. You go back to the lodge. Call the police. Go I think on. You mean go on. Live. I'll wait for you here. I can, you can barely see him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like, so dark. <laughs> military training. He blends right in. So it might I, that might not even have actually been the actor. That might have been a double. Uh, <laughs> Broken into like a pile driver hitting. Same for her over Damn. What what wrestler do you think was in the, in there with them that just <laughs> pile driving him like that? The Gill Man. All the way to the door. <sighs> Carpet's wet here. See if you can find me some powder. Powder? Oh, I I got some powder right here for you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't waste it. Don't waste it. <laughs> We're rich. We have plenty of powder. Yeah, be sure we get all of our fingerprints all over this evidence. No gloves. Well, before we do any damage, we better call the lab boys. <laughs> the lab Why boys. Do you think make a print like that? A clever man could have forged it. Do you think a man did that? You got any better ideas? Nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> what might come back? Come on. Here. Have the boys rope off this entire area right The boys. The come on. Seems to be delegating to a lot of yeah. external teams instead of actually doing anything himself. Right. The lab guys and the boys. Officer, I don't know if this is important. What is going on with the colors? I don't know. I don't know if that's like a just something that accidentally happened or something that was done on purpose. But some of the reviews I read I knew it. are like, why? <laughs> I got some of that crazy. I knew it was in color. <laughs> you were right. More than a million years old. It's actually a sequel to Scared to Death. <laughs> the magician is actually Bela Lugosi's oh, no. character from Scared to Death. 
<laughs> I saw those bodies, and whoever mutilated them has a very special problem. Yes, I realize that. Tell me a something special new. Special problem. Captain. I am a psychologist. Well, then, as a psychologist, what is your opinion of this Dr. Basso and his monster theory? <laughs> that anything is possible. As a scientist, I keep an open mind. Yes, Captain. Anything is possible. As a scientist, I keep an open mind. <laughs> That's great. Ooh, fancy. Nice Here at the club. So they did shoot this. What are we looking at? <laughs> some <laughs> lake resort uh, in, like, on the Texas Oklahoma border. I like how it just zoomed in on nothing. Yeah. <laughs> Establishing shot. <laughs> When she just he just left her in that chair after the show. Yeah, she's, she's just been, been there. The whole time. Nobody and nobody questioned yeah, it. Is nobody missing her? You awaken. She's his ward. I will touch you. And you awaken. And then she's gonna be like, Oh, what did I look like? And then you get your character creator screen. <laughs> <laughs> Exit stage left. Dr. Basso? Yeah, Lieutenant Blake, homicide. I want to talk to He's him. Still actually that stage, right? Is he still wearing his cape? I understand you put on <laughs> He's a magician all the time. Tonight. I'm never off Honey duty. <laughs> was murdered. What has that to do with me? You predicted something would happen in the beach area. Yes, I had a message. A premonition, if you like. When did you get this message? Tonight, during my demonstration. Many times during states of heightened concentration, I receive sensory impulses. I see. Had you ever been to the couple's cottage or to that particular part of the beach area before tonight? No. Yeah, he is still wearing his cape. You were talking about a, a monster. Yes. There was no doubt in my mind that she would come. She. She. I thought he was about to pull out a deck of cards and just start <laughs> shuffling. Just start. <laughs> it comes out at the beginning of time. Yeah. Fanning them right out. Again and again. <laughs> yeah, <for> sure. <laughs> I feel her presence even now. And she calls to you. I seem to be the only one who can hear her. And all this hocus pocus is supposed to be scientific. The science of ultimate research into the hidden recesses of man's mind. Oh, this gobbledygook. Bumbo jumbo. Basso, I'd say you were as good a suspect as any. I don't have to believe this scientific jazz of yours. <laughs> <laughs> scientific <laughs> jazz. The, the latest concept album. You've done your whole work. Well, I tried, Doctor Basso. Science is jazz. I warn you. She will come ashore again. When? I do not know. <laughs> That's a lot of help. Imagine answering a cop like that. Oh, last. Alas. I do not know. <laughs> so you're telling me, even though you just predicted this, like, but you can't tell me when the day. You need a few days on that, like hours before it's gonna happen. Is that the how the properties of per psychic predictions work? Yeah, for me to answer that, you have to buy a ticket to my show. <laughs> <laughs> And maybe I'll answer your question during tonight's Q and A. <laughs> what time is it? After midnight. How do you feel? You wow. found me in deep hypnosis, and I That's asked not a you time. not to do that. Mm -hmm. Oh shit! You After midnight. I need to get away from here and away from you. Damn. I feel like I've been dead. You do that again, and I'm going to leave you 
sitting here like a piece of clay. You will never leave me. You cannot. Someday I will. Doreen you mustn't talk that way. You are not only necessary to my psychic researches, you are necessary to me as a man. Whoa. We are, uh -oh. we are inseparable. Soon we will be rich, famous, powerful. The hate you now feel will turn to love. <laughs> Dorita. Jeez, toxic, super toxic boss over here. You will never leave me. As long as I live, I will possess you. This is what it's like working for Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> you try to quit and he just hypnotizes you. <laughs> what were you? Um, actually, uh, you are not leaving? Nothing. I gave you a new life. Soon the more magnificent. I don't understand the dots on his cape. I don't I don't like I don't like any kind of it's for mocap. You don't need spot. No, 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 no. Uh, the best cape is a simple cape. What is he? What is he? Is he? Is he the monster? Is that how we're seeing it? It's really him doing mocap. I think that is going to take us yeah, to our, break. our first break. So that was the exciting beginning of Creature of Destruction. So what do we think so far, boys? got some bodies so far mm. what are we at now two three <sighs> so several so yeah 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 we're More several several is the word to use um yeah it's it's interesting I think, um i think he's a pretty bad hypnotist if she's like hey fuck off well, I mean, he just kind of <laughs> nipped it in the bud right there. As soon as she said that, he's like, all right, got to put you back under. Uh, <laughs> all right, you're never going to leave me. You're going to be with me as long as I live, yada, yada, yada. So You're going to forget all about this. <laughs> you never said any of that. You got to love the power of a of a hypnotic magician. And you know, no, I feel bad. I, I feel horrible for her. Poor Dorina. Yeah. Poor Dorina. Sad, sad, sad situation. It is. It is. But we'll see. We'll see. Uh, if uh, if our hero can, re I'm only assuming that the guy's a hero because he's been in a military suit the whole time. Um, but maybe he's gonna, maybe he's gonna come to Dorina's rescue. Can only hope. But I mean, yeah, so far we got plenty of monster action. So that's been <laughs> Yeah, we just really front loaded all the monster mm -hmm. action. Yeah, now we're never gonna see it again. <laughs> God, please don't say that. I have a feeling that could be true. Um so that Everyone's was just gonna keep disappearing and we're never gonna see the monster again. Probably, unfortunately. Um you never, you never can be too sure with a with a Larry Buchanan film. Again, the one I watched last night, It's Alive, came after this. It actually uses the same monster costume. There's, a, there's way less characters, and you barely see the mon like, you don't see the monster for the first time till like forty minutes in. So, and they show it way less than we've gotten in even the first five minutes of tonight's film so i don't know his ratio could kind of like vary when it comes to when it comes to these uh monsters but i mean so far yeah they have front loaded is a good good way to put it because i don't we didn't really get much monster action after the first five minutes but fingers crossed in the middle we we get some get some more uh gruesome gruesome attacks by this she creature ancient she creature yeah ancient she creature a million years old <laughs> um, uh, yeah but she, but she doesn't look a day over a hundred thousand <laughs> not one bit <laughs> with those gills oh my god i'd kill to have those gills um uh, those eyes i mean it was gonna see pretty. I think she got her lashes done. Yeah, yeah. I got her. Got her lashes done. Had some LASIK, so she <laughs> is seeing real good with those peepers. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, I I love I, I love this really All shitty this monster. I eyes. love it. The ping pong ball eyes, <laughs> tennis ball eyes. I mean, you know, it's it's they're pretty pretty huge. Uh, so yeah, I I enjoy that, and um, I mean, again, it's it's just kind of crazy. I want to call it a she creature because again, I've just I've already seen the trailer for the she creature. And that seems a more appropriate title than Creature of Destruction, but what are you gonna do? He's he's gotta make it the same but different. Yeah. Um I mean, and that was basically like the deal that uh Larry Buchanan had with AIP. He like he made an indie film. AIP liked it. They distributed it like an indie courtroom drama. And then they're like, all right, we'll pay you to do these um, remakes of our horror movies for TV. And like his quote, he, this is Buchanan said that this is what this, the heads of AIP told him. He said that they said, we want cheap color pictures who want half-assed names in them who want them 80 minutes long and we want them now no i don't know you know i'm sure it was some form of that but that in a nutshell is like basically what he did with these eight movies is um i mean they were really only like came out within weeks of each other, basically. And he was making them within a week. As soon as production on one would end, production on the next one would begin. And he basically did these from like 64, 63, 64 to like 68 or 69. So it was really like a short period of time, but he did eight movies that... um. Tonight's film is not a remake of a Roger Corman movie, but a lot of them are remakes of uh, Corman movies. And um, so that's like some of the trailers that we're going to see during the break are for Corman remakes. Uh, It Conquered the World. Uh, He remade as Zontar, the thing from Venus, Um, which I actually like that title a little better than It Conquered the World. Um, and uh you know that was the thing they they all had different titles but most of them are remakes um he also remade a movie that was originally titled Invasion of the Saucer Men his remake was entitled The Eye Creatures so that's a little more uh a little more tame although the credits they messed up on and so it it's like he, they originally made the credits where it just said the eye creatures, but then somebody slapped attack of the on top of it. So it says attack of the, the eye creatures. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, you know, way more of an elaborate title than it in, in the actual film itself. Um, so we're going to see a trailer for that. And the other one that he remade, the original was called Voodoo Woman. His remake is called Curse of the Swamp Creature. And um, that feels pretty different. I like that title better than Voodoo Woman. And it is pretty different. I We almost watched Curse of the Swamp Creature before this because it's a little more of got a little bit more of a higher profile among Larry Buchanan's of this series of films, which all of them I believe are public domain. So we'll get around to all of them. I think most of them are. Um, I think there's one that we'll see a trailer for later called Mars needs women, which is uh, not public domain. (laughs) The rest of them are. And this, um, you know, so during this break, we're going to see, Again, because these were all TV movies, so I don't have trailers for the actual movies, uh, except Mars Needs Women. I don't have trailers for any of the other ones. Um, So we're seeing the original films that he remade, um, which all came out in like 57, 56, 57, 58. So about 10 years later, 
the studio that made these original films came to him and said, we need these remakes. Hurry up, do it. And he'd basically like go into the studio and his son said like that he'd have jam sessions with the heads of the studio and Roger Corman. I don't know if Corman was always there, but that they would like, they would like throw out like old movie titles and figure out, Oh, which one we should remake this one. And so they had, you know, had kind of a good thing going. Um, so we're going to see these trailers for these uh, f- late 50s sci-fi films. And then when we come back, we'll get into the exciting middle of Creature of Destruction. So stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> This is Carter, Johnny Carter. Oh, sure, they're from another planet. What a dilemma for young lovers Steve Terrell and Gloria Castile. You thought I was kidding. Nobody will believe the invasion of the saucer men. All this makes it seem natural for a beer-drinking bull to appoint himself chaperone of Lover's Lane. Hey, for Pete's sake! And a farmer with the longest shotgun you've ever seen plays the villain. What's so funny? Well, I expected to be frightened on my wedding night, but nothing like this. It's our busy night, too. We've been flooded with calls from people who say they've seen flying saucers and little green monsters. wonder how that rumor ever got started. <laughs> it's too fantastic to believe. Just think of it. Only this special unit and the President of the United States will know what happened here tonight. You mean you think we know what's happened? safari into a green hell of horror in search of a secret fortune in diamonds and gold. I want that money so bad that every time I close my eyes I can see it. Marla English, a woman possessed by a passion for wealth. Tom Conway, a man maddened by his lust for power. Touch Connors, a white hunter entrapped by an adventuress's black heart. Lance Fuller, Victimized by desire. <laughs> Mary Ellen Kay, a blonde captain in the darkness of Voodoo Land. Not man, not beast, but a combination of the best of each. Voodoo Woman, an experience in terror that'll tear your nerves to shreds. Secrets torn from the earth as old as the earth, combining voodoo witchery with the most advanced of medical sciences to create before your very eyes Voodoo Woman. Save your own world. It is the most fascinating mastermind man can conceive. 
a monster that can control all sources of the Earth's power, able to pull man-made spaceships from their orbits, making of those it chooses slaves. Of this woman, a willing handmaiden. Of the chief of police, a cold-blooded killer. Well, I've known you for five years. You just killed a man in cold blood. Why? I'll have to place you under protective custody. Peter Graves, the scientist who fought it. Beverly Garland, who believed her love stronger than it. Lee Van Cleef, whose brilliant mind was captured by it. Are you really ready to stop loving me? I'll need you even when no emotion exists. For a few dollars, you can, you can hire a woman who'll fit all your fetishes. She'll match your requirements perfectly. And if you ever get tired of it, you can always run down to the employment agency for another. You'll know terror to freeze your blood. You'll feel the heart-stopping strength of the most fearful monster ever known. You think you're gonna make a slave of the world? I'll see you in hell first! It conquered the world. And we are back. So, yeah, that was uh, the trailers for Invasion of the Saucer Creatures, Voodoo Woman, and It Conquered the World, which... Who could have guessed that thing conquered the world? I get, yeah, I mean, I get, <laughs> it's so it's so funny to me. I like I I was telling them about some of the behind-the-scenes stuff, which I, I believe I read all that in Roger Corman's autobiography. Um, where he explained that the reason the monster is, looks like that is because his engineering brain told him that it would, yeah, as Evan put it, have a low center of gravity, and so it would be low to the ground. But uh, most of the people that even made the movie were like, this looks ridiculous. Right, and the face is so ugly because that makes <laughs> It's invincible. Oh no. Again, the, the face reminds me of the the crab monsters from Corman's Attack of the Crab Monsters, <laughs> which probably had the same creature designer, I would imagine. That's why you just get those ridiculous eyes. Um it's so funny, I think, with all the kind of these especially aquatic creature suits, there's always something about the eyes, right? Like that either make or break the, yeah. the look, you know? Yeah, I mean I I think Tonight's monster, it's it's almost passable. It's maybe I don't want to say lazy. It's kind of straightforward. Just throw some stuff on a wetsuit. But the eyes, man. <laughs> well, I was trying to tell if in one of those crazy close-ups that it looked like the eyes had some like kind of like painting around the sides that looked like red kind of like veins, or was I just imagining that I, I that's a, I, in one of those close-ups it kind of looked like it but it could have just been the lighting and the way the frame like the color was maybe going in and out like it has had a tendency to do um <laughs> who knows who knows um i hope we see the monster again i hope so too i think we will i i think this will be a plentiful monster film again this is um you know, it's so weird because uh, this is, you know, I mean, that opening was there was a lot of monster. And for this being a TV movie, that probably surprised a TV audience to like, I mean, it surprised me to see that much monster up top. So I'm sure a TV audience was like, oh, OK, like, whoa, what's happening? Well, I mean, obviously, what's happening? Yeah. <laughs> what's going on here? Don't change that channel. Um, yeah, th this is that's the crazy thing about this is 1967, and all these TV movies were made before that was really even a concept. It wasn't like this. ABC was not doing their movies of the week yet. This uh -huh. was not like... <laughs> It was only three or four years, you know, it was it was only a few years after this, but that's kind of the interesting thing that AIP kind of got in on with their television division was, oh, well, like, we need more movies to fill out these syndication packages, 
So let's get this filmmaker out of Dallas to churn them out really fast so we can put it in, so we can fill out the package. That was basically it. They had to fill out a, syndic- a syndication package and they needed some cheap we need color to fill some slots. Yeah, I mean that was essentially it. They needed to fill some slots and they knew that this guy could take $22,000 and have a movie in the, in 2 weeks that was 80 minutes and they could make like $80,000 off of it, you know? You get a pretty good you, you know again the the kind of rule of thumb with filmmaking and return on investment is that you want to, you want to triple your investment. That's when you can, that's like when it's, you can actually consider it successful is if you're tripling your investment, even if you double it, that's not necessarily quite not a success. That's not a huge success, but any, once you triple it again, as we've learned, as we know, triples is best. Yeah, triples is um, best. Triples is best. <laughs> so, why, can, so why is that again? Is it because like so much has to go to mm-hmm. like what the studio or like rare marketing? Or- yeah, there's a lot that ends up getting taken out along the way, especially like if you're going theatrical in a major studio. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's kind of a lot that's taken out and that's kind of like, I think where Larry Buchanan, this was not an opportunity he could say no to because it's literally like a guaranteed, you know, they're going to put it in this package that uh, TV stations are going to pay for. They may be showing the movie at 3 AM, but (laughs) they're going to show, but they're going to show it and pay for it. That's kind of where this movie and uh, the other, um, it's called the Azalea. They're by Buchanan's production company, Azalea Films. So I've seen different terminologies used for these, the, all these films. But the one that I saw that I liked was the Azalea Collection, right? So like these, this collection of eight films, um, you know, it really it made, you know, it was not that you couldn't say no to like, oh, all right, well. Uh, they'll be shown at 3 a.m. and eventually they'll develop a cult following like 20 years later and it's going to lead to, you know, kind of a fandom that you wouldn't expect. There's a fandom for these movies that you wouldn't expect. And I'll talk more about that later, but uh, basically, yeah, like this kind of got wrapped up in the like cult fandom of the 80s that made Ed Wood popular and all that stuff. Um, because if you were up at 3 a.m., you were that kind of degenerate. And you saw this movie, you're like, what? And you're probably in an altered state of mind. What the fuck is this shit? Why is it so bad? <laughs> so um, we're going to get into uh, this exciting bad film, uh, Creature of Destruction. Anything before we get into the exciting metal boys? Any predictions? Any predictions? Any more bodies in the second act? Please, God, I hope so. I think I I might be getting ahead of myself. This might be more of a third act thing, but I think Batman's going to make an appearance. Mm. Ooh. Song was a good tease. Uh, I mean, it's. That's what's going to. That's who's going to take down this Gill man, the caped crusader. Mm, He's the only one. You see that bat signal in the sky. He's going to be out there trying to save the day. We can only hope that would actually. You're fighting lake crime. Fighting lake crime at Lake. I don't even. I don't even think I have the uh, Lake Texoma. That's where this was shot. Of course, (laughs) it was shot at a. um, I mean, they say the name of the film Tanglewood Lodge. It was shot at a lodge. So fun little. A little tidbit there. So, uh, all right. Well, if Fresh has it queued up. What? Huh? <laughs> Wait, I I'm not said... ready. <laughs> all right. Then we're going to go ahead and get into the exciting middle of Creature of Destruction right now. Oh. Good morning, Ted. 
Oh, I'm still working on that cigar. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> He's nursing it. Seems to be a nice guy. <laughs> Efficient. Has anything turned up yet? Nope. They nope. all say that. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> it's, it's real. Basil has nope. nothing to do with it. Do you? No, of course not. He lucked out with that project. That's what they're like saying money. over in Texas. <laughs> do you? Research has proven that some people have the ability to see into the future. Precognition. Well then, maybe he's got it. Look at that precognition we call it. This guy's working on MK Ultra for sure, yeah, right? <laughs> for sure. Ted, you're brilliant in your line. Psych uh, army psych psychologist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the military psychologist <laughs> studying psychic powers. Definitely working on MK <laughs> Ultra. One way to judge a man's brilliance, and that's by the size of his bank account. Oh my God! Get case, out of rank right along with the yeah, he's trying to uh, he's trying to hire this hypnotist to come work All for the government. All you gotta do is want it more than the next guy. Yeah, he's like, what can you do to a goat? <laughs> they go out and find a real Texas businessman to just ramble about his life for twenty minutes of the movie, because that would have been smart. There's a million dollar idea in this headline. Yeah, they conned him into thinking it was a documentary. The last paragraph. Each couple found murdered. One baffling aspect of the case concerns Dr. John Faso, who calls himself an investigative hypnotist. Last night at Tanglewood, a country club resort owned by the retired wealthy investors. <laughs> investigative Dr. hypnotist. Dr. Faso predicted that something horrible would happen on the beach area. He was questioned by Yeah, doesn't that seem a little bit like you should just know that guy's the one doing the crime and investigative hypnotist? Oh, I predict that this terrible thing will happen. <laughs> <laughs> You're not serious. I couldn't be more serious. Well, we can take this two-bit sideshow man and make him into the greatest thing in the country. Now, light you a cigarette. We'll put on a What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> we'll manage it. We'll publish This is the Fesh Pence edit. We'll put him on the lecture TV shows. <laughs> There's money in this prediction. Money. money. And between us, He's just he fucking Mr. Krabs, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You give him the stamp of approval, Ted. Captain Theodore Dell, young psychologist, says Faso's experiment's amazing. Opens a whole. <laughs> <laughs> I love these little cut in. I'm pretty sure Larry Buchanan also edited this as well. well so. It's the kind of escape stuff the whole world's crying for. Look at my wife. He definitely friend. tried. Ted. Do you think he's cutting between takes? What is what is for this? Money for you. Yeah. Oh, well, he's definitely just hiding the yeah, hiding yep. the blemishes. Wait, let's start piling up. With yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I've been trained to fight this sort of thing, not make a living from it. You'll get the hang of it before you count me out. Ted, I love it, dude. My daughter's going to need money. I have no intentions of supporting her. My daughter her. needs money. <laughs> Speaking of money. You don't have enough, bro? Yeah, I thought you're you're a money man. You seem in action. You might change your mind. You mean after what's happened, you're going to stage another one of the... I'm sure. The show must go on. So think it over, Teddy boy. Think it over. Yeah, Teddy boy. Tay. So is this is... Do you... Brilliant. Was this back when uh, they were smoking like real cigarettes in the movies? Mm hmm. A hundred percent. Yeah, they don't do that Point anymore. Ten. Not a, no, not really. Smoking Honestly, herbal cigarette. Yeah. Strangulation. Clove cigarette. Next Clove cigarette. Sorry, no. Let's be clear. The idea of the weapon used. Yeah, herbal. <laughs> yeah, it's Hollywood, it's like California. Tore them apart. Any special mark? Well, the imprint of a talon on the back of the necks. A talon. Talon, like uh, like an eagle. Anything from the lab? <laughs> no, not much. No prints. Do eagles have large sand, talons? <laughs> Nothing of value missing. I like no that they're sitting here like rules. discussing an active case well, in front of <laughs> every everyone at this restaurant, basically. This case gives me the... uh, at this beautiful lakeside <laughs> resort, <laughs> Lake Tanglewood. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is an elaborate advertisement. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> sure, you can use our lodge, but you gotta advertise us in the movie. You gotta play us up big. 
I can spend about 10 minutes on it, said Larry. The sound effects come in at the at a weird time now. On train. Sick. Yeah, how's it going? I'm going to get to go smoke on your yeah, bedroom just... now. <laughs> so what's up? Oh, hey, what you got here? How long have you been in this racket? Racket. So you... a non-believer. Say that for the paying guests. Mm. I assure you, I have been in communication with your source. Oh? Well then, uh, suppose you would tell me why I came. You wish to discuss business with me. Hmm. Good guess. <laughs> That's a, you know, not a bad shot. With a mirror. Yeah, like a mirror. You can add some depth. Nice depth. Fine, fine, but uh, let's not haggle. How would you like to be a rich man? <laughs> yeah, what? So anyway, money. <laughs> You've got something to sell. Shit, do you think this guy's Batman? Yeah, Bruce this Wayne, old class. Bruce Wayne. All this beats Coney Island, doesn't it? This before or after well, Batman no Beyond. <laughs> I have no action. I have not. Shut up, boy. Uh, I see he does have a deck of cards now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, finally. Now our deal goes down the middle. 50-50. But, but, but the actor can't shuffle, so he's just got a hold of him. What do you say? <laughs> No, I'd probably fuck up the audio if you started shuffling them. <laughs> it's too much for the mic. It's too much. Our deal begins as of now. We'll get the ball rolling tonight. I'm having some important people in. A newspaper man, a publisher, a psychologist, mm. Dr. Dell. Captain Dell? The young Air Force psychologist? Captain Dell, the laptop guy? He's a national hero. <laughs> <laughs> endorsement. He's got it made. Now play it big. Give them some more of that. I heard he's not uh, that good. The world stuff, and they love it. Give them uh, more predictions, big ones. Another murder. She will come out of the lake again, and she must kill. He just said, "Give them another." Oh, they, uh, uh, they should. <laughs> In my hands lies a power that has been given to no other man. Boy, you are a salesman. <laughs> yeah, boy. Boy. Now. This is business. Boy, I Thanks tell you. <laughs> I'll have the papers drawn up right away. Your contract will be with my daughter. It's, uh, it's a sort of a surprise wedding present for her. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, how much time will you need to set up any gadgets? Mm. I use no gadgets. Mr. Crane. You know, whirly gigs. All right. I'll see you tonight. Make it big. I don't care what you do as Make long as Make it big. You shake them. Shake him. Wait, what are is he? I don't get it. I'm not sure. She's still here. The door has opened for us, Dorina. We shall pass through it together. Yeah, I feel the bad for her. She's just stuck here. Path. Yeah. Prisoner. So he wants this guy to predict something really bad will happen. Pretty much. Um, I, all right. Fresh, I'll, I'll need you to tell me when we get to the next break. Because I think okay. I remember, but... You know, step one. It's, it seems like step. there's things that I'm it seeing that I'm like, wait, this looks like where I'm real. supposed to break. It's not. It's just hard to tell. No, we're not close. Step <laughs> one, hire the hypnotist. Step two, make it big. Step three, question mark. Step four, <laughs> profit. Profit. Money. <laughs> big, big. You gotta go bigger. We have a very unusual act tonight. It's showtime, and may I present 
Dr. It's showtime at Tanglewood. Ladies, gentlemen, it has been my very good fortune to find in this young lady the perfect hypnotic subject. <laughs> Damn. Tonight, Is that, that's, that's not I a good thing. I will reveal the secret of life. Of a little pan there too. Shh. We learned about this in hypnotism. And now class. for that phase of my work that has earned me such names as fraud and charlatan. I am privileged tonight to have in my audience one of the country's most promising. I don't know why the color keeps changing so dramatically. I don't know if that's just the print or if that's like actually how it. Looks. Of psychology, my most outspoken critics. I invite him to join me tonight on the platform so that he may expose me as a fraud. Doctor? Doctor? Well, thank you for a very nice introduction, but I think I'll sit this one out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Good. The Smart. Refuses. <laughs> I was gonna start taunting him, but I was like, you know, yeah. not appropriate. It's like reverse not appropriate. heckling. <laughs> yeah. Go up there, you big baby. You think you you can do so good? Why don't you come up here and do it? That life is one unbroken chain, that it is endless, that we have been given continuous life, perpetual life. Tonight, I will take Dorina. Got to cut away for a second. <laughs> Back through time and space to her former existence as Marion Rose. We will journey together back into history. 300 years. Would you care to question the subject? Nice. hear this man's voice I understand you will answer any questions he asks you fully and truthfully I will she's all yours captain where were you born Chicago Chicago were you born in America yes National blood strains do you carry? Belgian, Dutch, and French. No English? No. Did your parents or your grandparents ever live in England? No. Have you ever been to England? No. Have you ever been especially interested in English literature or history? No. Why all the English questions? I'm so confused. You are now traveling back through time, through space, farther and farther back into the past. Stop when you wish, when you see something familiar. I see a Tyrannosaurus Rex. Right. Stop now. Yeah. Yes. Hurrah. Right where you are now. There's a man here killing all the dinosaurs <laughs> with a gun. What is your father's name? Ronald Welford Rhodes. Where is your father's house located? Oxnam Road in London. What is your name? Marion Anne Rhodes. And the day and the year? Sunday, October 12th, in the year of our Lord, 1618. You are smiling, Marion. Why? 
Captain Anthony Medes do, and he's going to ask for my hand in marriage. You know, isn't the point of a hypnotist you will hear show a supposed to be that they get someone from the audience, not that, that they bring someone along? Yeah, now they already have the has something prepared. <laughs> Who is your reigning monarch? James. Is he a beloved monarch? No. Hated. Beard. Who is Sir Edward? This isn't really a hypnotist show, huh? <laughs> yeah. Was Chief Justicular till James had him deposed. When was that? Last year, in November. Last year. Who is Francis Howard? Divorced wife of the Earl of Essex, now wife of the Lord Chamberlain, the Earl of Somerset. Upon what grounds was the divorce granted? This would be the least entertaining dinner show. Yeah, they were like, yeah. all right, what's what's uh, remarkable? Check, please. <laughs> Why does he keep asking her about England? I have shown you one. Can we get? Can we just get ours to go? <laughs> I think this show is fantastic. But there are still more frontiers to be explored. We're going back However, even further. The demonstration is over for tonight. Oh shit. Ooh. Rabba 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 rabba. And everyone's cool with this, dude. That's the weirdest part. You're being informed that the creature that visited the beach house will return again tonight. <laughs> I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Uncomfortable <laughs> close up with Rando? <laughs> Yeah, that was your opportunity to say, what's up, Doc? I don't know. So if you don't mind, I would like to borrow your <laughs> Missed opportunity. For my own examination. In the interest of science, I'm more than willing. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I'll get some air. Lights out. <laughs> Lights out. <laughs> Hello. Love it. Wow. Just zoom in on... On that, that beach. beach. Ah! Look at that. It's, it's that, that beach. beach. That same beach. Whoa, look out! No. Oh, motorcycle on a beach. I'm surprised it's handling so well on the <laughs> sand. Oh, yeah, we got some beach party action in the house. We're going back to the beach. Uh-oh. I'm gonna jump my motorcycle over this monster. <laughs> you need to go drain the lizard over here in these grove trees. Oh, nope, I've got my guitar. I gotta play a quick little ditty first. Batman! <laughs> a reprise of Batman. Encore, encore. I mean, technically, this is a beach party, man. Shitty, shitty the song. Is so bad. So Everybody's is sitting around. Or? I don't. It, I guess it's supposed to be, cause yeah, it looks like looks like we're missing a couple stops here. So yeah, I think it's day for night. Yep, definitely day for night. Really, really bad day for the night. Sky is blindingly white. Yeah, and everyone's like dark like you can't see anything so when he does day for night is it just like yeah i'm gonna put the light behind everybody and then film them no it's like the he takes the settings on the camera and makes it really dark in in the settings of the camera like what is in all cameras even back then the f-stops 
you take the f-stop and you lower it it's gonna make everything darker so they just have a really low f-stop going <laughs> and i'm out of here Here we go. He's oh, back. Go. Oh my god. Just a muddy, muddy mess in this in this day for night. I, I did my one song. My, and I'm out of here. I'm out. You only paid for one song, so all <laughs> that's all I'm contractually obligated to do. No matter how much you love it, and I know you're gonna love it. Now it's time to drain the lizard. <laughs> Got to pee again. I think I've got a bladder problem. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> you can't see it, but it still looks hilarious. <laughs> I hate to be the guy in the costume. <laughs> you no, you're not going to run to the camera. Keep walking. I know you can't see. Just keep walking. Keep Is walking. he supposed to be I can't stuck? Breathe on this thing. <laughs> Got too much shit on me. I can't breathe. <laughs> I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. I'm gonna rip the head off of this thing. <laughs> yeah, this is. Ah, I love how it's just slapping it's them. Just... <laughs> so it's definitely day for night because this is the same night as the as the hypnotism show. Ah. Everyone, come look. He's dead. He's stuck in the sand. And it doesn't look like they're really using any blood with these bodies. Which, with the trailer for the she creature, there was like blood on the dead bodies there. So it's, I think there was a rule on television at the time that you couldn't show blood. <laughs> <laughs> Spot on. Stop fighting. He only got a glimpse of it. It is but... just as possible the boy saw the soul of a living woman. Transmigrated. Well, there's no way it looks like this. Yeah, this I looks know, ridiculous. Perhaps more. <laughs> Simply because you've never seen such a thing, don't deny that it can exist. It exists only in your publicity seeking imagination. Don't what you? Will. Don't point touch your, me. Poke me. <laughs> don't yeah, you don't poke, poke me. me. Don't you poke me in the chest. That doesn't feel good. What if I just poke you, like, right here? Now you've stretched out my jacket. You gotta get me a new jacket. <laughs> I demand compensation. Ooh, I like that. It's a nice shot. What? I'm getting a message from the mothership. <laughs> We're going to space. Oh, nope. It's Is it military man? And is he in the plane? See, what, is he just going to land? He's going to land just off screen and walk in. You're not to be out by yourself. I've got to get back to my... MK Ultra experiments. You can get another assistant. There are lots of girls. No, my dear. There are not lots of girls. I just retire and lay by the pool. No, my dear. There are not lots of girls. <laughs> not for me, there aren't. Not for me. <laughs> Let's see if we can see the camera crew in her sunglasses. Yeah, 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 yeah totally there it is. It. They're, oh. they're right there. <laughs> See, we've we've done that. It's it's you knew it's gonna happen. Oh man. You will resist. He's our enemy. I love that. Your beauty must not be destroyed. It is my Your beauty must not be destroyed. By the creature of destruction. No, oh, he said it. This is C O D, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you remember all I said. Cash oh. on destruction. Yes. 
I love that you can see everything in her glasses. That is my favorite. I'm calling from downtown Digital Destruction. This is Haywood. <laughs> Whoa, no, session. It wouldn't do you any good. You can't hypnotize me. So is he gonna leave uh Mr. Crab's daughter Pearl for uh this uh witch woman? Look, you must understand I want to help you. Get you back to a real life. You've been living in a shadow. I like that jacket. I think she's been living in a chair. <laughs> yeah, she really has. She hasn't, <laughs> she hasn't walked one step the whole movie. Like a doll. Well, our book's going we had our Ken doll earlier, and here's our Barbie doll. Syndicate this morning. And uh, next month, 350 newspapers serialized the Marion Road story. How do you like that for quick profit? I salute you. Not I. It's that sales ability of yours. Oh, it's, it's much more than just sales ability. Sure, sure. Mr. Crane, <laughs> I think it's time we split 60-40 in my favor. I almost Ooh, didn't recognize him. I don't have a minute. It's 60-40 or nothing. Got him. We can arrange something satisfactorily. I'm sure we can. Oh, yes, it's not a good idea to allow your family to go to the beach. Uh, <laughs> don't wink. Your luck. You better lay off that prediction stuff. Hey, don't go to the beach One tomorrow. Miss, and our profits take a nosedive. <laughs> it's like a Snapchat of him with an AR. Like, don't go to the beach. <laughs> don't threaten me. I'm certain our good fortune will continue. It better. I need money. I'm, I'm gonna make all the popular Was that the break? Pick. Oh, no. Okay. Is it, it coming up? It yeah. Okay, just let me know when. Ah! <laughs> Crash zoom! I love it. That's great. By order of the police department. See, that's like the the Jaws sign. I love that. <laughs> yep, yeah, and we are not going to do that. We're going to roll right up on the beach here. Yeah. Yeah, fuck you. Beach is closed. We know better than you. No swimming. By order of the Amity PD. Can you believe it? There's nobody here. We got the whole beach to ourselves. The ah. fade to black that comes up is the break. Okay. Uh oh. Always gotta have. Gotta get the couple in the car. Ah! See, now he's had some sound effects on this scene. It's a little, this one's a little better than any of the yeah, other ones. Something. I tried to warn him. Right here. And that is going to take us to our second break. So, yeah, I, I mean... <laughs> we got plenty of monster. Very nice, right? Especially right there at the end to see just a second, um, you know, just a second round of, of monster action there right before we even go to break. Yeah, know, yeah. Um, with the crash zooms and... <laughs> <laughs> I do really love that. And... Between that and the um the intercuts with uh, in, the, in the dialogue, <laughs> the cutting in this is just fantastic. I'm like seeing so much stuff that I've done in my own <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> amateur filmmaking career that it's like, oh no, like I've got to bridge these two like clips together. Uh -huh. Something I've got to cut away to something. Wait, cut to somebody's face. Yeah, and you just all right, and we're back. You know, it's 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 the seams are so prevalent. Like yeah, they're yeah. they're just so apparent. It's um. It's kind of the, uh, the the crew in the sunglasses. Is, uh, that's, that's my that's favorite. I absolutely love that that one <laughs> because I've been there, done that. You know, like 
Oh shit! Yeah, we probably should have. We probably should have had him take the sunglasses off or something. Nope, he just went with it. And would you say, uh, you know, last week we called the film endearing because of, I guess, the same kind of thing. Do you think that applies to this one? I mean, f- I, me personally, I think so. But what? What do you? How do you guys feel about it? Yeah, I think it's it's in a in a sweet spot between bad and really bad it's I, like yeah i think so yeah it's not so bad that it's terrible the it's this like this hypnotist character is really pulling it up for me because it's just so it reminds me of um scared to death where you yeah. just have this 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 magic man here for some reason just well you know pull pulling some strings mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, the the it's kind of this weird. I saw a review, and again, you know, take it for what you will on IMDb, but I I like the comparison. And somebody said that it was a cross between Horror of Party Beach, which we haven't seen, but you know, it's similar to uh, the Beach Girls and the Monster, only if the monster was spoiler alert real um and it but it's a cross between uh the horror of party beach and the cabinet of dr caligari oh, because okay. the idea because is psychologist yeah this hypnotist yeah. who is causing this really this innocent person to go out and commit you know horrible crimes and so it's you know it's it's but it's we it's like so weird like because what what's the connection what's the yeah, it's so it's, strange it's, okay, right so here's my prediction the end of this film it's going to reveal that the monster was actually the doctor the whole time <laughs> hmm, where have we seen that before yeah no no I I don't even think that they're that smart, unfortunately. But uh, because I mean, again, at the end of the day, oh, Uh-oh. I think that was smart for <laughs> for the Beach Girls and the Monster to handle it like that. But uh, hold on, just play presto. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I mean. Larry, oh, Larry's making it work, I think, overall. He's, again, he's got to fill 80 minutes a movie. And so he's uh, stretching things out a bit. But so far, it's keeping our attention, it, I think. It certainly is. It's not, you know, uninteresting. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> Just uh, a, little, a little shoddy. Uh, I think the... The day for night stuff is the most egregious. That yeah. that's just just doesn't look like nighttime. It's just day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, again, that's a Larry Buchanan special. It's, <laughs> yeah. he, that's he just my style, that. buddy. That's it, just how I do it. It really is. I mean, that was a kind of a regular move for him in these Azalea films. It was just Azalea collection. Yeah, in the Azalea collection, it was his go-to and. Uh, you know, we're, uh, we're going to see some Larry, more Larry Buchanan trailers uh, during the break, because I mean, again, he had a long career as an independent filmmaker in Dallas, starting before he did these films and long after he did his last one in 1969, uh, he made about 30 movies in just in Dallas alone and or i mean in texas and uh so we're gonna get some trailers that kind of span his career so the first one is for the movie that got him on the at the map with aip um it's a movie that he did um it was a courtroom drama um based on uh it was kind of a ripped from the headline story that's the thing about larry buchanan outside the horror movies, he was a rip from the headlines guy. 
Um, but he was also kind of like a conspiracy guy. Uh, so he's like your class. He's got a crazy story. Classic. T- so he was orphaned as a child, grew up in an orphanage, uh, fell in love with movies because he was in like a Baptist orphanage. It was very restrictive. So he was like, movies were an outlet for him. Like grew up, like was thinking about becoming a, a, a pastor and was like getting ready. He was going to go to a like religious college and then was like, ah, I love movies too much. Hitchhiked <laughs> to Hollywood, got a job in the props department at 20th century Fox. And then it, like, Eventually, he started getting some bit roles. So he his he changed his name to Larry Buchanan. It wasn't always Larry. Her the studio changed it to Larry Buchanan. <laughs> it wasn't always Larry Buchanan. It was uh, what was it? Uh, Marcus Larry Seal Jr. And what's, what's your name, name, son? Yeah, Mar- Marcus Larry Seal Jr. Nope, not anymore. It's not. You're going to be, uh, what do we got here in the dictionary? Let me just close my eyes and pick uh, Larry and uh, Buchanan. Okay, great. There we Boom. go. He's in. You're in. So so he started doing that, and then he, he actually was kind of in New York, uh, like working in, in the theater scene for a little bit made a short film, tried to make a Western film that never got released, but then went back to Texas, did some industrial filmmaking for a little bit, and then made this uh, first trailer, the the film for the first trailer that we're going to see. Uh, that wasn't the first thing he did. He did a, <laughs> forgot about this. He did a movie um, about the Dallas nightlife scene. And at that time, this was 1962. And so one of the clubs that he was at was uh, Club Haunted House. Well, I I was probably one of them. But uh, this is a quote from him. We shot much of it at Jack Ruby's place a year before the assassination. And we met Lee Harvey Oswald there from time to time. A real loner. Jack Ruby wanted to be in the picture, but I, but I hated him, so he wasn't. <laughs> so that was the thing. Jack Ruby, as you may know, was a nightclub owner. So oh. they filmed this documentary on the Dallas nightlife scene at Ruby's nightclub. I don't know Do if he that's actually. True. That sounds a little far fetched. So he. It sounds like Larry Buchanan had a a knack for stretching the truth a little bit about like the things that he was around and kind of his place in history. But, uh, you know, like the 20th century Fox stuff wasn't in every story about him. Like one of the most recent news articles about him, like that just came out like this year and like interviewed his son in it. It was like a Dallas newspaper thing. It didn't even mention the Fox stuff, but it like covered his whole life. So it was like, was that just something that he kind of made up, you know? So, uh, but this was one of those things that he, you know, he said that he met Lee Harvey Oswald. And so shortly, uh, shortly he ended up making a movie called the trial of Lee Harvey Oswald. That was like about if Oswald like had like, wasn't killed by Jack Ruby and was put on trial. Um, but he did that after the first trailer we're going to see, which is for a movie about a rip from the headlines case about a black man who was accused of raping a white woman in Texas near where he was. And he was friends with the black man who was accused. So um, he got like, he basically, he didn't get the right. He, I mean, he, I guess he essentially got the right. He had to change names and do certain things, but the, the, the man who was accused was literally like collaborating, helping collaborate with Larry Buchanan on this. Did they get Atticus Finch? Ah, see, I'd see. I didn't actually find out if he had that great of a lawyer and got off or what the outcome of the trial was. And I hadn't seen the movie, but basically AIP saw it. They loved it. So they put an exploitative title on it called free white and 21. And um, that was not what Larry Buchanan wanted to call it. Like the AIP put that on it. They also put a gimmick on it 
where you, the audience, are the jury. And there's like a <laughs> there's like a two minute break at the climax of the movie for the audience to make their decision on whether he's innocent or guilty. And that's but all first you have to elect a four person in the Yeah, theater. it's actually gonna take a full hour to actually get through the process. Yes, Your Honor, we have reached a verdict. We've, yeah, it may it may take you all night, actually. We've, we've been, been deliberating all night. We've been night. deliberating gotta, for hours, but I think we've the theater arrived at a just conclusion yeah um <laughs> but that was all aip that was not larry buchanan wasn't that kind of a guy necessarily like he made that film kind of genuinely on a but on a very low budget and very quickly and so aip was like saw all that and they're like we'll release it and hey how about make some other movies for us so that's how you get these tv movies but even before the tv movies how about making eight movies for us yeah basically you right can't now you can't say no to that um but before that he uh he did that lee harvey oswald movie so he did like two courtroom movies and then they were like we want all horror movies so that's the second trailer we're going to see is for Mars Needs Women, which was the only one of those eight movies that was an original idea from him. It was the only one that wasn't a remake. Mars Needs Women. I think I've heard of this one. It's the most iconic of the eight films that he did. And it's in terms of its, its reputation as a cult film and its place in pop culture. It ended up getting some pop culture cachet in like the eighties and and maybe even in the seventies a little bit. And I've I've never seen it, but the trailer is great. I mean, they say the title in it. So, you know, you always gotta love that. <laughs> um and so then the third trailer we're gonna see is for the basically the last horror movie that he did, which is called The Loch Ness Horror. And uh, it's it's about Nessie and Loch Ness, but it's like, I mean, he was he's filming it in America, and he's got these people who are obviously pretending to be like you know Scotsmen, <laughs> and and it just looks horrible. And Nessie, this trailer prominently features the creature, and much like tonight's was it film, right in the camera, yeah, and much like tonight's <laughs> film, it's so incredibly fake that it's kind of hard to believe that you're seeing it before your eyes it's also just a guy in a wetsuit uh there's actually a little more to it than that strangely <laughs> enough but it is still for it, it came out in 1981 so for 1981 like post jaws 1981 standards yeah, that that's what you're you know, that's it, what you're it's your on. classic larry buchanan like way behind the times of what like most audiences would consider high quality acceptable you know that's what you're gonna get um so so some fun larry buchanan trailers so we're gonna crack into those and then when we come back we'll get the exciting conclusion of creature of destruction so stick around we'll be right back In the picture, three, white, and 21, you, the audience, will be the jury. You will render a verdict of guilty or not guilty in the case of The People versus Ernie Jones. Greta Mae Hansen is three, white, and 21. She is the state's main witness against Ernie Jones. You will hear and see the full and intimate details upon which Greta May bases her accusation of criminal assault. If Greta May consented to the relationship, then Ernie Jones is not guilty. If, however, though she is free, white, and 21, she did not consent, Ernie Jones is guilty of criminal assault, and your verdict should be guilty. Due to the strictly adult and shocking nature of the subject matter, Scenes from the motion picture were purposely omitted, as there are probably minors in the audience. Free, White, and 21 is a motion picture for adults only. Colonel, 
the message is, Mars needs women. These were the words that startled the world. This was the reason for an invasion that shocked the Earth. Martians, beings from outer space, with one prime objective, women, Earth women, to help repopulate their dying planet, to bring new blood to an ancient civilization. Beauty and the beasts, only the beasts were men, Martian men, every woman checked and double-checked, only the most perfect, the most beautiful. Is Earth to be ravished because Mars needs women? Loch Ness, deep, dark, cold, frightening, not to those living on its shores, but to those outsiders who threaten its world-famous secret, the Loch Ness Monster, this is a warning. There is something in these waters. And it is alive. The Loch Ness Horror. is the greatest unsolved mystery of our time. They call her a monster. And still they come, the curious, the thrill seekers, the scientists, the hunters who would kill for profit. Shorty, I tell you, she's out there. Now she is fighting back. And no one is safe. Easy. Must he's got At last, the world's most treasured story comes to the screen. And we are back. So <laughs> that was Free White in 21, uh, Mars Needs Women, and the Loch Ness Horror trailers. And yeah, look at Nessie. Nessie's looking good. Oh yeah, in her, in her full glory. Yeah, you know, looking like Jurassic Park out here. Yep, full lighting, no shadows, just straight up uh, in it. Oh, what Watusis? Yes, no, it is very well, welcome. It is very cool. Uh, you gotta love again. Larry Cohen was embraced, fully embracing it. I read a quote in his autobiography about the making of the Loch Ness Horror, and he was just like, it was a family affair. It was so much fun. <laughs> we had, you know, like that was the kind of thing. Like, sure, it looks really cheesy, but yeah, he was having, they're clearly having fun. Um, and that's, Were they at uh, Lake Texoma then too? Yeah, tonight's film. I mean, he's clearly having fun. That was the thing about like, you know, that was the thing about him is that he really did have fun like making these movies initially. And well, I would hope if you're shooting a a film at a uh, a country club on a, a nice lake that hopefully have a pretty nice yeah. time. I mean, again, the, that's the beauties of regional filmmaking is that you're leveraging your connections to get these locations to mm -hmm. film at that end up being very fun. It ends up being fun just because of where you're located. You get to do... You certain, spend a week at the country club. Be in a different environment. Yeah, there's there's something to that with regional filmmaking. And uh, he kind of opened the door for... Uh, this uh the this man named SF Brownrig who the name may sound familiar he's the director of Don't Look in the Basement which we watched a few seasons ago and um you know that's a Texas made film uh which 
you know, Brown Rig was basically like a protege of Larry Buchanan. It started as a protege of Buchanan's, and it's like was a sound man on some of his movies. Not a sound man on tonight's movie, but a sound man on some of his stuff. So Schlockmeister Jr. Yeah, kind of. I mean, you know, he made some pretty wild '70s films. Brown Rig did, and I think just the one that we watch is his only public domain one. Um, and another interesting connection to that is we haven't seen her much, but the actress who plays uh, the Mister Krabs man's wife is actually the head of the asylum in Don't Look in the Basement. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, uh, her name is uh, Annabelle, Annabelle Winnick, but uh, she's credited as Annabelle McAdams in both of these movies. Uh, but yeah, she's, uh, and she, it, I didn't notice it, I didn't know it, but until I watched this movie tonight and saw the credits, but she's also credited as like the dialogue, like, like, continuity or script supervisor or hmm. something like that so she's obviously again this is regional filmmaking where you have people that are used on like multiple movies um and there's also just a lot of other like wild people who are involved with this like the writer of tonight's film he's using a pen name enrique Tuseda, but it's his real name is tony houston He's the son of John Houston, who's a famous Oscar-winning writer-director. Um, his sister's Angelica Houston, who maybe you guys would know from she played Morticia in the '90s Adams Family movies. <laughs> okay. um, but she's an Oscar-winning actress. Like she comes from a Hollywood dynasty family, right? Uh, and Tony Houston went on to be nominated for an Oscar for best. Uh, adapted screenplay which he wrote like with his father um but he also wrote a bunch of these larry buchanan movies this is how he started his career he did like, he write this one he wrote this one okay. and he wrote like many other okay so we got a we got a serious writer we got a serious yeah a serious writer but he didn't write like really anything after the dead so you know i don't know but he you know he did uh, a fair amount of these uh larry buchanan movies so how do you guys feel about the writing in this movie so uh, far. It's pretty bad. It's not great. <laughs> I mean, you know. Uh it's classic Larry Buchanan. It's, you know. There's been what was it? I the favorite just answer line. You the same way they answer everything. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. My other favorite one was uh nope. Space Jazz or no jazz science jazz. Was it science jazz? Yeah though. Science jazz. That was yeah. my other favorite one. Uh, what was it? Look, I don't believe any of your science, science jazz. jazz. Yeah, so <laughs> you know, creative people. Even the monster suit was designed by a guy who'd go on to do like major special effects stuff in Hollywood. But you know, he started out doing these really. Well, you got to start somewhere. You got to start somewhere. So he, you know, uh, he did these really ridiculous scenes. Um, yeah, his name was Jack Bennett, and he went on to do he went on to do the effects for Problem Child, which you know that's a classic uh, '90s, really terrible, you know, kid Fever dream of a movie. Yeah, you know, you know, you know, you've seen it, right, Fresh? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. No, there's. Um, so he would did the special effects for that, and uh, yeah, one of my professors uh, in uh, school of arts was one of the like executives who champion problem child and he'd bring that up and i'm like man i watched 10 minutes of that movie and was like at like 12 years old and was like nope i was like i yeah this it's, was not it's got kramer in it as a criminal who's trying to kill the problem child or something i don't know john ritter's in it he's fun john ritter's always fun um but yeah it's it's kind of crazy you know you start making these you know tennis eyeball fish masks and then next thing you know you're figuring out how to do home alone style um <laughs> gags so you know you're working with kramer you're working with kramer and you know he knows how to pull off a gag a very physical <laughs> gag so you got to be coming up with some pretty high bar effects you're gonna rise to that challenge 
So it's interesting kind of who came out of Larry, this like regional Texas filmmaking orbit, right? It's yeah. it's kind of interesting. Um, So, yeah. Little, funny how that works. Funny how that works. A little bit of history for you. Confluence of artists. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the, again, the beauty of re anything outside of Hollywood that is independent regional filmmaking is it's just kind of like, Who's in this area? Oh, it's this this Oscar winning director's son, and this you know, and they're blah, 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 make a movie, you know, kind of wild. So, um, yeah, yeah. Any anything before we get into the exciting conclusion of Creature of Destruction, boys? Any prediction? I mean, Evan, you've already made a prediction. Yeah, I think other... I'm just gonna let my prediction stand. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, for anyone who's just joining us, uh, I'm. Uh... I'm predicting Batman's going to swoop in. <sighs> My fingers are crossed for they that. They did foreshadow it earlier, to be fair. They did. You don't You don't spend two minutes on a Batman song if you're not prepared for him to make a cameo appearance at some point. Yeah, in the third act, Chekhov's Batman. <sighs> we can only hope. Um, my fingers are crossed. Well, on that note, Fresh, if you have it queued up, I do. We're going to get into the exciting conclusion a Creature of Destruction right now. Is it day or is it night? <laughs> night, night, <laughs> night, <laughs> night. Hey, the headlights are on. Yeah, it's nighttime. Oh, of course. <laughs> Yeah, the, one of those headlights go like a foot in front, two feet. <laughs> Did you see that? My God. <laughs> Not only the sound, but the way he was running was amazing. I if I said that, you'd say I wasn't taking the scientific approach. It's gotta be. Two young kids. Wrong place at the wrong time. But I'll get him. I'll get him. We'll get him. We'll get him next time. We'll get him. I love old school ambulances. Look, it's not like old school hearses, you know? What did the sign of that car say? Bratcher? Yeah, I saw that. I don't know what yeah, that is. Yeah, I didn't is. catch it. Were you asleep when it happened? The last thing I remember was Dr. Basso saying good night. Had he put you into a deeper state of hypnosis? Yes, he said I needed the rest. Do you remember anything after he put you into that state? Nothing. It's like I've been dead. How do you Damn. feel now? Brutal. Very tired. This is... I've been doing something very strenuous. Strange? I would think that, uh... All this sleep's less... really tired me out. <laughs> I know I should. Hint. I never do. Yep, look right into the camera. Right into it. Go on. Yep. Stare <laughs> at us. Wrong with me. Second person movie, <laughs> first one ever made. <laughs> Second <laughs> person. <laughs> Can you tell me? That's no. the gimmick. You're the main character. You do know you have to get away from it. No, but second, because because they had done a first-person movie up to this point, but a second person, that's... <laughs> yeah, second person, the characters are all just talking to you. Am I? But you're not, you know... You're not... You're Yeah, that's the super interactive experience. Wouldn't a second person movie mean that the camera would be showing you? Oh no, no, it would be directed to you. Okay. But you wouldn't like you'd be you wouldn't say anything. Intended yeah. recipient. 
directly. Not a sign of a human. I was just picturing paying to go to a movie theater to be shown myself sitting in the movie theater. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> it's horrifying. Recursive like movie. Your life is. Yeah, the and fractal is. movie. Yeah. How does it end? Yet I know Basso hates the whole world and everybody in it, except himself. I believe he'd set a match to the whole thing if he could. <laughs> What is he? Is he got like a nuke or something? Has he got an atomic bomb? How's he gonna set a match to the world? Whoa! I don't have any answers there either. Look, I want you to conduct. I think this is some with the print. Use some of your own experts. No, that's impossible. Lieutenant, let me tell you something. Parapsychology is in its infancy. Let me tell you something. We don't disprove. We merely investigate. Now, this sort of thing could bloom into a full-grown carnival. Right up Basso's alley. A carnival? <laughs> well, what you need is a few more police <laughs> Yeah, cut to you. <laughs> Already have. Will you talk to Basso? I've done that too. He'd be delighted. He would? Uh-huh. The rest is up to you. He would? Ooh. What? <laughs> that business last night I didn't like. It was terrible. It uh, was coincidence, wasn't it? <laughs> you want it to be coincidence? Of course. <laughs> now he's getting cold feet. You will never believe. You brought the new contact? Sick hat. I know, I do love the why you go, I don't know why, yeah, he's but <laughs> he's gonna break out his trumpet and start uh playing some ska. He's been taking lessons in science, Jazz. Well, don't depend on any more changes. There's going to be an investigation this afternoon, a bunch of head shrinkers. An investigation? Mm -hmm. I'll try to stall it off. Why? This is what I want. Official recognition. Listen, these are not hysterical women. These are real doctors. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, that's, uh... <sighs> is that a yikes? Hey. Uh... Yeah, I'll give him a little yikes. yikes. See, it's on him. Give him a little yikes. <laughs> it's not hysterical <laughs> women we're talking about here. I need money. <laughs> he's just, he's your classic 60s old man. I'm really shocked he hasn't said anything racist yet. We can't close the lake. Maybe I am. Anyway, business is business. He is basically the mayor from Jaws. He just needs to use the phrase summer dollars and then we'll be in business. Television people in tonight for the demonstration. I'll try to line up a network spot for you. You have relived part of your life. A net like network network? Like the the like a a real television network spot? Uh the movie the network. <laughs> You mean network? <laughs> the the network. <laughs> I've been doing a bunch of online gigs lately. You know, network. <laughs> the details which you have heard have proven to be accurate. After the last demonstration, I sent a cable to England. There is a grave with the headstone. That is what I'm not working on. Sixteen hundred to sixteen fifty one. Doing network. Could have been planted. She could be rehearsed. Perhaps you have created only a vaudeville act. That's very clever. <laughs> could anyone have rehearsed the intimate details of her life in 17th century England? Her speech, her mannerisms? Every statement this girl has made has been proven. Damn, I feel so bad for Dorina, man. She She's just... Have read she needs to, like, so. go all... Gill monster on their asses. Her life is a matter of record. Is that not so, Lieutenant Blake? Life is a matter of record. Do you think this is a hoax, Ted? My mind is open. <laughs> I'm a scientist. <laughs> As men of science, science. Must know that anything that will shatter a science is usually rejected. Now, I have taken this girl back to a life she led 300 years ago. I can take her even farther back. Say to 
the moment of her soul's creation. Shit. Can you materialize her into a maniac that goes around the beach killing? <laughs> That's supposed to be a joke. Did it sound like a joke? <laughs> I want some answers, Paso. Did it sound well, like a joke? But this is a somewhat I scientific chuckled. examination, not a courtroom. I do not see how we can accomplish anything. If the it. fat businessman was there, he'd I laugh. Because you do not want to see. I thought I wanted recognition from you. But now that I realize the truth, it means nothing to me. This has been impressive. I don't need your permission. Thank you, doctor, for a very I don't even care anymore, man. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor. It looks like the G man. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Freeman. <laughs> and what I said about Basso still goes. But it's still just an opinion, Ted. I know, I know. But it's still one of the best opinions around. What is it you want me to do? Get rid of him. Good evening, stranger. What is the penguin going to say about this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 finally. Yep, Evan, I think you're. I think you're right. I think Batman's going to swoop in here to save the day. A Gill man. Penguin. Here now. Everything's going to be all right. I think that guy who asked if he was joking, he's probably the Joker. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you joking? Because that's kind of my thing. <laughs> what the hell? Why? What? <laughs> we'll be leaving the country tomorrow. I'm not going. You will be going. I'm staying with Ted. You will be going. <laughs> They're just standing there waiting for action. <laughs> I found the strength to resist you. Ted you know, as you do, just stand in the doorway. I'm confident of our love. I wouldn't allow Dr. Dell to see you. You are mine. No one will ever take you away from me. You are mine, and I am yours. You do understand that. I am yours. You I'm are good. mine. You are Mr. what you are. Everybody's here. I have some very important people I want you to meet. They're Boom! Awesome. Copyrighted uh, material detected. Stream takedown. Uh, <laughs> Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young got our asses. I'm aware that right now you're in. Or is it just Crosby, Stills, and Nash? I don't know which iteration it was that saying that. Dorina, if you can hear me. Dorina. Let me know. I know. Is this I, I Dream of Jeannie? You must oh, <laughs> that's what it is. That's what the visual, no, yep. Together we'll fight him. He'll have to let you go. <laughs> Dorina, listen very carefully to me. It is Ted. I want you it's Tad. You must Damn it, can't you remember my Basso. name? Ted. <laughs> As he speaks to you, my own thoughts will join with yours. Good evening, Captain. Good evening. Uh, if you will excuse us, it's time to begin. It's time to begin. <laughs> Whoa. I love how the sound effects went just for that one shot and then they just stopped. Good evening. I trust that those of you who have witnessed my demonstrations realize that the purpose is education not entertainment you will close your eyes in a deep refreshing sleep your eyes 
are heavy. You are Eyes are heavy, knees are weak. <laughs> Go on, go on, do it, do it. There it is. Great, terrific. You are tense. We are ready to try again. You want to sleep. <laughs> I love that. You are very tired. That's why they tell you if you're gonna like cut on the same you thing to move it more than like you know. Just a few degrees, yeah. Yeah. You are falling, falling into a. So is our, uh, our main character psychic now? I'm talking to you. Well, he said that he was going to join. Like your thoughts will join with mine, or something. As I don't know, he's somehow do hypnotizing her as well. That's that's what they teach you. Yeah, I think he's telepathic. MK Ultra. We've already said he's. Yeah. He's in yeah, on it. It's actually Ted Kaczynski. <laughs> <laughs> His ah oh, yes, he was Ted. Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, my subject is disturbed tonight. Her world is disturbed. Whoa. They're like, okay, can and I get one a whole world? Drink? And one of you is responsible. I urge you all to leave Tanglewood. I think that her. I think the Return woman the that was in the close up there was the. The lady from Don't Look in the Basement. Give me your attention, please. I'm Lieutenant Blake, Police Department. I want everyone to do as Dr. Vasso says, in an orderly manner. Now, go to your cars. When everyone is in a car, mm. leave together. Stay together. I have been <laughs> all along the road. Let's go. Yep. Her. Smoke show. <laughs> Definitely, really only a few years before she put on that doctor's coat. Started indulging insane people. Dude. Why are the cops already here? Because it's a sting, bro. I'm so confused. I'm not following any of this. The cops have been somehow trying to set up Basso in association with Ted. Uh, ooh, he's petty. Chief Petty Officer. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Snap. You know he's armed. Were there any early episodes of SpongeBob where Mr. Krabs carried a gun? Because I feel like that would be like appropriate to the original iteration of his character. The early episodes, no, it, it only like, shows up in the later seasons. He's he is essentially like Frank Reynolds. They're just the same character, <laughs> right? They're always they're always engaging in schemes. You know that they carry that piece on them. My, my favorite episode of uh, Always Sunny is when Frank busts into the bar and says, we're making pizzas now. <laughs> Don't be surprised if they do that this, this season. <laughs> They're building some suspense here. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, is it night? I guess it's night. <laughs> it's night. You know, you can tell from all the moonlight ah. reflecting on the water. Oh man, the suit got a little stretched out yeah. from the water, huh? <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, in in the next iteration of the of the title sequence. Uh, the people are talking. I hear crew talking in the background. What did you? You guys hear that? Yeah, he's dripping that thing. It literally sounded like maybe it was even Larry Buchanan was like yelling direction in the background of that. <laughs> <laughs> He's done. I don't know where the theremin came from all of a sudden. Any of this starting to look familiar? Hmm. <laughs> That's a little suspenseful. Yeah, but does any of this look familiar? Is this from the beginning? The first five minutes of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Tying it back in. <laughs> well, bringing it back around. The thing is, he was contractually obligated to bring all these movies in at eighty minutes. <laughs> so, so he just like recycled five minutes of it in the beginning to get it to eighty minutes. <laughs> they couldn't just put uh, five more minutes of. Uh, Bird shots and Batman songs. Nope. Nope. Just the just the climb one of the cli near climax of the movie, pretty much. With the, this this movie needs a cold open. Let's just use the climax. Ah, oh, terrific. <laughs> and now here's sound effects. We'll just put the end at the beginning, dude. It's, it's avant garde. And they, like we're getting way more unbroken shots. The beginning was so. Yeah, it was just more. Ah, oh. frantic. Yeah, this is a little less. Uh... You can kind of see. The seams a little more. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Yes. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the sound of a monster attack. Wow, and wow. that was that. <laughs> so he's done. Now how am I going to make money? Put my body on display. We'll, <laughs> we're going to get every last penny out of my death. Come see the victim of the hideous monster. Uh -oh. What? There it is. Get him. Get him. Yeah, just shoot him. She's just gonna walk right out in the middle of the night. <laughs> yep, in the middle of the night. Right in broad night. <laughs> <laughs> the broad night light. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. I have a gun too, see? See? <laughs> oh, look, conveniently there's a couch right here to put her down on. Dorina and I were together, at least in spirit. Your interference made her waver. You killed that spirit. What do you gain by killing me? The worst you can be charged with is accessory to murder. I gain the satisfaction that the one who shattered my world pays for the offense. Mm -hmm. No! No! Oh, damn. Oh, oh, shit! That is 
is crazy, dog. Mm. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I cannot let you leave me. In this ugly world, you were all that mattered to me. That's why I shot you and killed you. <laughs> Oops, because you my mattered so slipped. much. Soon we will be together. In spirit. On the Hail Bob Comet. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he does have those Marshall Applewhite eyes, doesn't he? I like the oh. guy that maintains their website. He convinced them that he needed to stick around to maintain the site. <laughs> yeah, we just we really got to have some upkeep on this. Guys, guys, I don't think I can go through with it. Who's going to keep the website up? We'll never know. One way or another, she destroyed the creature. She knew that the creature was some sort of physical link to her past. In destroying herself, the creature could not exist. She searched for freedom and found violence, terror, <laughs> destruction, greed. A little bit of blood there. Is there a monster lurking within each of us? Waiting. Waiting. <laughs> you gotta love that little reprise of the quote there. Uh. And that was creature of destruction so what do we think boys i think it almost feels like cheating to make that the ending and then like end it on this hmm how philosophical hmm. note yeah it is a little like uh not r really much of a resolution right like yeah it's it's almost i mean it's a kind of interesting idea that like she is connected to this like spirit of this monster or something like it's it's not really clear right what, what's going on but right i don't know i don't know yeah it's 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 um again they're they're taking that from the she creature story from the original version of this movie so okay, i don't so. know if they explain it a little better in that movie <laughs> they certainly don't explain it very good here um so the interesting part of this movie is is not uh because of the these filmmakers no no <laughs> definitely not and i mean yeah the best part of this movie is another movie yeah, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I think one of the reasons that it ended so abruptly was because apparently the 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 guy playing the lead was he was under contract for the studio, but like was trying to get it out of his contract, and basically there was a lawsuit, and then as an out of court settlement, he made this appeared in this movie, and then um basically left before shooting was over so like larry buchanan was like well you still have three more days you're supposed to shoot and they could he couldn't get it in so it seems like there, that's why maybe it seems like there's a little kind of he's he's just kind of in and out and yeah then i guess if he's really supposed to be the main character he didn't really do a lot at the end no 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 exactly he really didn't i mean again it his narration at the end is supposed to basically say that she chose to dive in front of him to take the bullet, knowing that it would kill the creature that has been committing these murders. 
That was basically what his narration was saying. Is this an allegory for abusive relationships? That's what it seems like, right? Like, definitely uh, um, abusive employer-employee relationships, abusive um, romantic relationships. Certainly, you could read into it. And let me tell you, people have because... (laughs) Again, Larry Buchanan's movies, especially these eight films, or at least the seven that are horror movies, actually, you know, again, in the 80s, developed a really big fan base. And to the point that, you know, much like Ed Wood, it got a similar cult following because people were just coming across this, these movies at 3 a.m. And were like, again, like we are watching it and kind of like joking around but reading into it. But people actually did to the point that there's a whole magazine that was devoted to Larry Buchanan films in the 80s that was full of like essays on his movies, like like very much like film studies style um, essays. And it was called Zontar, the magazine from Venus. And I mean, they they really looked at his films as very much. was it a magazine or was it a zine? What, now, g- give me the definition of zine as you is because I'm I've heard it, but what do you when Isn't you say a zine, zine? More like um, like a kind of a, I'll say unofficial, like an unofficial magazine, I guess. <laughs> yeah, like fan made kind of thing almost. Yeah, a lot of these like. 80s and 90s like film magazines kind of that were out of the woodwork were definitely very much just kind of like fan made but you did have some like scholarly approaches and uh so on tar is kind of like that like there's a there's this quote that i had that was really just kind of sums up his films from the magazine that just kind of shows how it's viewing his work and it's um Perhaps no other great bad filmmaker has produced such a consistently narco mystical body of work as the Sacred Seven AIP Azalea Classics, <laughs> with their obsessive themes of alienation, loneliness, entrapment, and the love hate relationship between an isolated, misunderstood man and his own personal rubber monster. The living antidote to the effects craze gore schlock and Sp- Spielbergian space slush of the 1980s. So that's kind of the like tone of writing coming out of the like the Zontar magazine and yeah, this. Yeah, that's, that's way more scholarly. Yeah, it's scholarly, expect. but it's also very anti-establishment. Like that's the kind of thing about these film magazines is like that embrace Paris cinema is that they're very anti-establishment. Like look at us embracing these movies that everybody says are terrible. Like, and we're taking a scholarly approach. There's like very much. Uh, Screw you, Dad! Like uh-huh. at like vibe to it all. This but is punk. Yeah, like, like this is this punk. Is like punk again, that's the '80s and '90s film scholarly world for you. Like to take these things that are considered trash and say, no, there's there's a scholarly merit to these. I mean, again, that's how you get bad film as a whole. Like subject of like filmdom, like a whole like sub sub genre unto itself that gets a whole book. You know, yeah. um, you know, every time uh, she, he would wake her up out of the hypnosis, uh, my my thought was like, why doesn't she just leave? Yeah, <laughs> get up and walk out. <laughs> if, yeah, why doesn't she just like run up out of there? It says in my contract I don't have to take a single step in this movie. I can just sit the whole time. <laughs> I prefer to sit. I act better when I sit. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's another you know point <laughs> towards the abusive relationships things everybody asks well if it's so bad why don't you just leave yeah yes uh, again again reading into it in a way that's like there's themes he's actually trying to say something here like there's something to that i think um and i mean again larry larry buchanan lived long enough to see this fandom and and whether he was embellishing or not, say, yeah, you know, I was playing around with some bigger thoughts and bigger ideas. And 
he enjoyed that people saw this in his work without him having to go out and say, well, this is what I want He said that after all his work had been championed. He was like, he was lucky in a way that like Ed Wood wasn't. Like he got to see the the fan the cult fandom behind his films. Yeah, know? I don't were people making magazines about the deep themes present in Ed Wood's movies? Definitely not by the time he died. But yeah, but honestly, no. Like that's kind of it's interesting that you bring that up because I started thinking earlier today what what does it say about their respective fan <laughs> fandoms? There's a whole scholarly magazine on Larry Buchanan. And you don't have one on Ed Wood, but what you have with Ed Wood is somebody tried to create a religion around Ed Wood. So what does that? <laughs> so what does that say? Yeah, I don't know which is better, but they are. Th- those are two very different things. That's what I'm saying. There's something about the fandoms that kind of like, again, like what that cult uh, or what that bad film book is all talk. It talks about, and I haven't really read it or anything, but. It's basically talking about how the intention of the filmmakers is baked into like why they're appreciated and valued as cult objects, right? And uh, yeah, I don't know. I think tonight's film again, it just shows that there's bad, you know, you can say that a film is bad, but it'll keep me interested for 80 minutes, even when five of those minutes are re edited <laughs> from the climax of the movie into the beginning to get me hooked. Um, and still, you know, there's still something to be said for that. Um, and there's at least a handful of Larry Buchanan uh, horror movies from the mid to late 60s that we'll get to watch on the show. Because they're public go. domain, yeah. so that was our introduction, and this is considered one of the l- more one of the least interesting. So, introduction to the Azalea collection. To the Azalea collection. So, uh, yeah, no, and you know, again, it, it, Larry, our introduction to Larry Buchanan, and he got lucky getting to see his fandom. Uh, another cult filmmaker that lived to see his fandom is who we're going to be spending time with next week because next week we're watching a 1960 film called Tormented, which is a ghost story film directed by Bert I. Gordon, a.k.a. Mr. Big, because he made a lot of movies with like giant insects or giant people <laughs> and it was all the like rear projection it was really bad special effects um but this, this is a, is a ghost, ghost film so this is not you know is it a giant ghost film no unfortunately not a it regular not, sized ghost film. it's regular ghost film but it's by the seaside so oh, again oh, we're we go. we're we're sticking around in that environment which keep those swim trucks on you got to keep keep them on you know if you need to take a little time out to let your hands unprune then you can let your trunks dry out on the deck and then when you're ready to go back out, hopefully they'll be dry because nobody likes putting on wet trunks. I, I hate putting <laughs> on wet trunks. Don't even get me started. It's awful. Right. I think you have to get in the water first, and then it's not so bad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you gotta really, you gotta get your head wet. Some people they want to slowly dip in. You know, right. it doesn't. It's gonna if be. You ever, if you ever have to put on wet shorts, just strip down, get your head wet, put the shorts on. That's going to be the easiest way to do it. That's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Um, But yeah, so you can join us next Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern for Tormented. Of course, we'll be back on Wednesday for another exciting installment of Undersea Kingdom at 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Don't remember what the title of that episode is, but it will be a lot of fun. Um, uh, Of course, you can go find all of our past episodes over on our YouTube page, which is at ScreamStream Live. So go over there, like, and subscribe to that. It's, uh, you know, we're, we're slowly building our audience, but, you know, every every like and subscribe and comment helps. So um, you can go there for that. And, of course, we're over on the socials, on Twitter, and Instagram at ScreamStream Show. 
and now on Threads at Scream Stream Show. Oh. You know, Threads is the threads, new, the new thing, the new thing, and that we're new thing. You know, again, when you can just import right from Instagram, it makes everything very easy. So we're over there. You can go follow us, like and subscribe over there. Of course, you can find me on uh, Twitter at Spakenstein. You can find Mr. Fresh Rogan over on Twitter and Instagram at Fresh Rogan. And of course, Mr. Evan Sink is over on Twitter at Caligari Cursed. Anything before we sign off tonight, boys? Everybody on three. One, two, three. Nope. 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 Until next week. Nope. (laughs) Sweet screams, everybody. Pretty tight. And to all, a good fright.